Six day Nate Ryan and I landed on the Kahilna Glacier. After setting up a base camp and doing some warm up skiing, we launched for the southwest ridge of Mount Francis. Scary snow conditions on the descent left us tired and in need of booze and entertainment. Some stadium seating and a uh, beautiful 7 inch screen with surround sound up there. After waiting out some more weather, Nate Goodwin and I climbed the mini moonflower. excellent ice climbing brought us to the top of the ridge. We both agreed it was the most fun route we had ever climbed in the mountains. Oh shit! The next day, Ryan and Dan climbed Bacon and Eggs, a similar route to the left of the mini moonflower. despite the nasty weather. After more weather, Nate Goodwin, Dane, and I set out for the north buttress of Mount Hunter to climb a bit of a round. That's 6.05 on a Monday. Nate is halfway up. Snowy apron. Start. Each pitch seemed to be better than the last. We shared the route with two other teams and everybody got along. I think we're all just happy for the chance to be up there. That night we arrived at the first ice band, dropped some bivy seats, and were rewarded by an incredible sunset. Pretty awesome night. Pretty hard to beat. It's warm for now. We're comfortable. And we're ready to keep climbing. Unfortunately, the weather had other plans for us. We awoke to heavy snow. Rather than climb the crux pitches in the torrent of spender, we made the decision to bail. The party who we had let pass us on the route gave us some beers, so I guess being nice and kind of slow paid off in the end. 
Soon after, Ryan and I set off for Denali in our main goal, the Cassine Ridge. Dane and Nate were nice enough to help us haul gear part of the way up. For four agonizing days, we hauled our gear and food up steep but well-traveled terrain to 14,000 feet. It was all worth it when we arrived at 14 camp with enough supplies for a three-week stay. The weather deteriorated and we hunkered down to wait out eight days of up to 60 mile per hour winds. Fortunately, we came prepared with cinnamon rolls and plenty of TV shows. A gorgeous high pressure system rolled in and we were able to climb the west buttress with our friends Jason and Wade. Summiting North America's highest mountain felt pretty damn good. After four days spent debating the weather and doing recon, we decided to launch up the Cassine Ridge despite an unsettled forecast. Jason's partner was too sick to climb, so we invited him to come with Ryan and I. We descended the west rib and walked up the valley of death to the base of the casino. After enjoying a nice rest in the Bergschrund, we launched up the route at 11 p.m., taking full advantage of the 24-hour day. I was lucky enough to get the first block of the Japanese cooler. Jason took the lead in the early morning and safely brought us up the cowboy arete, the mental crux of the route. Ryan took the lead through the first rock band as the storm came in. We decided to bivy at 15,700 and wait it out. Fortunately, we got some good news that night. Welcome to camp for the night. 15.7 bivy. Not expecting good weather, but we just got a weather report that said things are gonna be more splitter through the rest of the weekend. The next day was gorgeous. We enjoyed a slow, leisurely morning and recovered from yesterday's long push. After 16 hours of rest, we were ready to move again. While we were leaving camp, a massive Serac avalanche filled the valley below us and consumed our tracks from the approach. It was a good reminder not to let our guard down here. I took the lead on the second rock band and got us off route, but it was really fun climbing, so I guess that's a fair trade. Jason took the lead up a couloir that bypasses the snowy slab pitches and brought us to the top of the second rock band. We unroped and started the beautiful high altitude snow slog up to the summit.
feeling you get from summoning a big route with great climbing partners is most easily summarized by this noise. We were nearly down when an equipment failure almost caused an epic. Uh, along the way down, maybe just past the football field, uh, my toe bell popped in a couple different pieces. And, uh, Fortunately, duct tape can fix almost anything. And the next day we packed our sleds and headed down. Turns out going down with the sleds was about as much fun as going up. Thirty-one days after we'd landed, the trip was over. We left feeling fulfilled and excited for whatever the next expedition would be. The last thing we did in Alaska was eat $50 worth of salad in the Walmart parking lot.